After hiding her whole life from monsters, a girl discovers that the sea creatures were closer than she thought. Today we recap the story of the movie, Ruby Gilman's Teenage Kraken from 2023. For land beings, the marine world is unknown and dark, where there are unknown creatures like the Krakens, who have always been feared by humans. Ruby, a teenager living in Oceanside, gets ready for class. When she looks in the mirror, she hides her gills in the collar of her blouse. In an animated video, the girl presents her research on the prom, which will take place on a boat, but her mother Agatha warns that the girl cannot go to the sea or get rained on, prohibiting the young woman from attending the party. Even though her daughter is passionate about the ocean, the woman is undeterred by the dangerous monsters the unknown can harbor. Soon after, the Gilman family prepares for their life among humans by agreeing that when someone asks why they are different, they should answer that they are from Canada. On her way to school, Ruby is surprised by Captain Gordon, who drives a vehicle full of tourists. The man questions the bluish color of the girl's skin, but she manages to throw him off by saying that she came from abroad. Afterward, the young woman gets on a video call with her human friends, and is surprised when they let her know they'll be going to the party without her. While feeling hurt by the group's decision, the girl is faced with her friends standing in front of her, and confronts them. However, the teens convince Ruby to lie to Agatha about attending the dance, and decide that the girl's next step is to extend an invitation to Connor, the young man she likes. So the girl believes she should make a request using a mathematical calculation, but Margot suggests she do something extravagant. When they arrive at school, Ruby is surprised by the decorations, but is even more startled when Connor appears in the hallway. She quickly imagines herself making a request to him, however, she is snapped out of her reverie when the young man approaches, leaving her embarrassed. After the awkward encounter, the girl plans to use the confetti bomb to propose later. Soon after, she learns that Connor finds the extravagant requests a stretch, so she hides the confetti launcher and tries a simpler approach. Even so, the young woman ends up messing up and confesses that she will be sick on the day of the ball, leaving the young man confused. However, when the girl turns her back, the confetti bomb falls, but Connor picks it up and becomes curious about the object. While trying to retrieve the device, the girl presses a button, which makes the bomb explode, spraying thousands of confetti in the young man's face, this makes him fumble and slip to the edge of the fence, falling into the sea. Quickly, Ruby tries to throw a buoy to save the young man, but the object is tied by a very short rope. Faced with this situation, the girl sees no other way out than to jump into the sea. Even with great fear, she clumsily swims against the force of the waters and finds Connor. Suddenly, the girl is thrown by the sea current and gets stuck in one of the plants. However, her hand begins to glow and the light spreads through her body, causing a bright explosion. At the same time, someone saves the young man and leaves him on the surface. Soon after, the girl also arrives on dry land, looking for her friend, but finds Margot and discovers that everyone is aware of the confusion. In the crowd, Ruby runs into Connor, who admits he was saved by Chelsea, the new student. The red-headed teenager doesn't miss an opportunity to introduce herself, drawing the attention of everyone, who instantly adores her. During the commotion, young Gilman notices that her hands are still glowing. As she tries to hide it, she ends up drawing attention from Chelsea. In addition, her vision begins to blur and the girl runs away when everyone stares at her. Soon after, she hides in the library and tries to call her mother, but ends up calling Connor. Remembering that Agatha will be upset because her daughter went to sea, the young woman gives up the call. Suddenly, her legs begin to grow rapidly, and then her hands, making her body bigger than the bookshelves. Then a lady enters the place and is faced with a giant monster in front of her, which makes her scream in despair, scaring both of them. At the same moment, the girl grows even bigger and takes on enormous proportions. In addition, Ruby can barely control her own body, so she flees into the forest. At the same time, Agatha is about to sell a house to a couple seeking safety in Oceanside. However, realizing that there is something strange in the forest, the woman tries to distract the two. She quickly gets in the car and tries to talk to her daughter. Along the way, she runs over an animal, which is actually her brother Brill, who moves strangely due to the gravity of the surface, as he is used to the bottom of the sea. At the same moment, the Kraken woman pushes the man inside the vehicle to continue the journey. Meanwhile, Ruby who is in the forest near the road hides as she notices the approaching vehicles. Inside the car, the two brothers argue and are surprised by the giant monster outside. After being discovered, the girl hides behind the lighthouse, but her mother easily finds her. Soon after, Agatha approaches her daughter and starts telling a story about when she was a child, making the creature's size shrink. After Ruby returns to her normal state, the two embrace and the girl is startled when her uncle appears at her side. Upon arriving at the Gilman house, Brill meets his new nephew. Meanwhile, in Ruby's room, 
Her mother explains that whenever the young girl comes into contact with water, she will turn into a giant kraken. In addition, Agatha shows her hands glowing, indicating that she also turns into a monster. Even in the face of this revelation, the girl feels deceived, as she always believed that her family hid from the beasts, but she did not imagine that the Gilman women would be able to transform into the creatures feared by humans. Discovering that everyone at school is talking about the huge animal that has destroyed the library, the teenager panics and quickly leaves the premises. In her room, Ruby hears Uncle Brill telling Agatha to ask the girl's grandmother for help, but the woman does not get along with her mother. Hearing this, the girl realizes that there are still secrets she does not know. Soon after, the young girl runs through the streets looking for her uncle, who is being attacked by dozens of seagulls. Ruby quickly manages to distract the animals with food, then asks Brill who sent him to the surface. He tries to deceive his niece, but ends up saying that Grandma Gilman was responsible. Furthermore, he reveals that she is at the bottom of the sea, so the girl thanks him by hugging her uncle, but tricks him by luring the seagulls with a sausage, so she manages to escape into the ocean. Inside the water, the young girl's body begins to glow like the first time, until she transforms into the giant creature. Suddenly, Brill appears before her, but decides to take her to her grandmother. During the journey, the glow of Ruby's body catches the attention of Gordon, who is on the surface of the water hunting. However, she doesn't notice him and continues her adventure, delighting in the whales and jellyfishes she encounters along the way. After crossing a sea current, the young woman is surprised by the kingdom of the Krakens. The place has a bizarre structure with several lights, and a tunnel opens when uncle and niece approach. At the end of the corridor, the girl comes across a lush, palace-like room. In front of it, Brill reveals that her mother is the last queen and ruler of the Seven Seas. Quickly, the woman feels happy to meet her granddaughter, but it causes an explosion of fury because Agatha never introduced the two. After that, Ruby is taken to meet her people, who call her princess, so the queen reveals that the successor to the throne has returned after 15 years. However, the young girl doesn't like the idea very much, which makes her panic. Meanwhile, Agatha goes to her room to check on her daughter, who is fast asleep under the covers. In fact, she doesn't realize that the one in the bed is the girl's pet. At the bottom of the sea, Ruby discovers that she must protect the kingdom from dangerous creatures such as Leviathan, Umabozu, and the most powerful of all, the Siren. Even though the Krakens are powerful, there are only three women left who can transform and defend the throne of the species. In addition, Queen Nerissa, leader of the mermaids, found the Trident of Oceanus, a weapon capable of defeating any creature. However, in an epic battle, Agatha managed to steal the powerful artifact, forcing the evil redhead to flee. After that, Ruby's mother hid the trident and left her kingdom to live on the surface. While talking to the girl, the queen ends up shooting a laser beam from her eyes, impressing her granddaughter. The girl also possesses powers like her grandmother, yet she feels pressured and decides to leave. During the journey through the dark waters, Ruby says goodbye to the animals, but is surprised by a steel cable that traps her tentacles. On the surface, Gordon uses his wiles to capture the creature. Quickly, he throws a spear that almost hits its target. Faced with this situation, the girl concentrates to fire her powerful laser, but nothing happens. At the same moment, the man starts throwing even bigger projectiles. However, Ruby is taken aback when someone catches the spear with their bare hands, and then sets it free. Suddenly, Chelsea appears showing off her mermaid tail. At the same time, Gordon drops a huge bomb into the sea, forcing the two to flee quickly. As a result, only the man's boat takes the brunt of the blast. After escaping the enemy, Ruby quickly says goodbye to her heroine, since she can't think of so many problems at once, leaving the redhead frustrated. On the surface, the Gilman girl returns to her room as if nothing had happened. The other day, she tries to sneak out of her parents, but they eventually notice her presence. When talking to her daughter, Agatha feels a saltwater breath, yet the teenager admits nothing to her mother. On her way to school, the young girl is confronted with the great destruction she has caused in the streets of the city. In addition, the citizens are commenting on the freak who caused the mess. Even Ruby's friends believe in the appearance of the Kraken, since a video recorded by Gordon reached them, which leaves the girl terrified. In this way, the girl tries to convince the group that the hunter is crazy. Even so, Trevin decides to share the video with his thousands of followers. In light of this, everyone at school starts receiving the recording, causing Ruby to have a panic attack and run to the restroom. Suddenly, she hears voices outside the cabin and realizes that Chelsea is on sight. Soon after, Miss Gilman asks her new friend for help, admitting that she just wanted to be a normal teenager. Faced with this situation, the mermaid invites her to a girl's day at sea. The pair then dive into the depths of the ocean, where Ruby learns about the wonders of the Seven Seas. After the adventure, 
Chelsea confesses that after the Battle of the Trident, her community went into hiding and she felt out of place at the Oceanside School, until she met her marine friend. Afterward, the mermaid admits that she thinks it's impossible for the two of them to resolve the conflict between their kind and the Krakens. Still, Ruby believes they can come up with a plan. Thus, the red-haired girl proposes that the two find the trident to demonstrate to their kingdoms that the object can be a symbol of peace, rather than causing discord, so their communities would not need to hide. At the Gilman residence, Agatha is surprised when her brother shows up looking for a home, since the queen has kicked him out of the house. While watching the news, the family realizes that the fisherman keeps talking about the appearance of the creature. Faced with this situation, the woman forces the men of the house to confront the monster hunter. After arriving at the boat, the Gilmans realize that Gordon is already prepared for a new attack with his weapons. Quickly, Arthur, Ruby's father, suggests that they sail together, but the man is distracted by Brill and asks where he came from. At the same moment, the family's uncle fumbles, which causes him to fire the fisherman's gun upwards. As everyone walks away, the projectile returns and hits Brill square in the face. Despite the suspicious man, Gordon ends up accepting the two man's help. At the bottom of the ocean, the mermaid leads Ruby to the sea station, which is the power source of the entire sea, where Agatha has hidden the trident stolen from Nerissa, who Chelsea reveals as her mother. However, only a powerful being can reach the center of the volcano, where the trident is located. Thus, the mermaid admits that the Kraken girl is the only one who can withstand the sea currents. Faced with this situation, Ruby throws a piece of tin against the underwater volcano, but the object is thrown from side to side, and returns completely destroyed, quickly turning to ash. After that, the girl realizes that she won't be able to do it alone, deciding to ask her grandmother for help. In the palace, the queen takes her granddaughter to a room where there is a turbine that simulates super strong sea currents, causing the girl to crash against a rock. After regaining her balance, Ruby manages to swim against the current, and thus returns to the volcano again. Within the water currents, she manages to move forward easily, but a stone appears in the way and causes the girl to be thrown outside. Later, the girl learns that laser vision is summoned through the strength of the Krakens, so she trains her physique and learns to direct her anger. Soon after, the young girl prepares herself by imagining her mother's lies, this causes her to cast a powerful beam, which she can barely control. Teenager Gilman then returns to the underwater volcano, but is unable to get inside, which is extremely hot. Faced with this obstacle, the girl learns to thicken her skin in order to withstand any temperature. The other day, she demonstrates that she has learned to control her laser to the point of destroying only the cell phones in the hands of students at the high school. While walking with Chelsea, Ruby doesn't even notice the presence of her group of friends, leaving them hurt. After that, the Kraken girl returns to the volcano. This time, she comes across a barrier of sorts, but ends up getting distracted by her destructive thoughts and is thrown out again. Faced with this situation, the girl believes she must do something she would never do, ask her mother for advice. At the same time, the men of the Gilman family manage to distract the fisherman, causing the boat to go off course. However, the man becomes suspicious and irritated. Soon after, the younger Sam throws his pet into the sea, which causes the hunter to be attracted by the animal's light. He quickly captures the beast, and everyone pretends that the creature is a baby kraken. Suddenly, the little beast lunges at Gordon, who manages to defeat it in quick fashion. Meanwhile, Ruby prepares to introduce her new mermaid friend to her mother, who is at a crowded event. Upon meeting Agatha, the girl immediately tells her about Chelsea, but when she turns around, she realizes that the girl has disappeared. Then the two enter the house and the woman discovers that Nerissa had a daughter, who became Ruby's friend. Faced with this information, Agatha forbids the young woman to approach the mermaid and return to the ocean. Soon after, the Gilman girl gets angry and starts transforming into the giant creature, quickly destroying the house. After Ruby runs away to the forest, her mother asks Brill to look after the teenager as she is going to meet her majesty. After arriving at the palace, Agatha demands that the queen stay away from her granddaughter. In addition, the woman confesses that the young Gilman is involved with Nerissa's daughter, at the same moment, the sovereign reveals that the mermaid never had a girl. Meanwhile, Ruby goes to the volcano and easily crosses the barrier, reaching the powerful trident. After spotting the girl with the artifact, Chelsea admits that she waited 15 years to retrieve the trident and destroy the Kraken Kingdom, completing her revenge. Suddenly, she transforms into a giant, powerful mermaid, and reveals that she is Nerissa. At the same moment, the evil creature attacks Ruby, who feels completely deceived. Soon after, the young woman receives another blow from the evil queen, who throws a giant rock at the girl. On the prom boat, Connor throws petals of a flower into the sea and is surprised by a glow that illuminates the depths of the waters, revealing the giant mermaid with the mighty trident. 
While all the citizens despair, the creature destroys the houses looking for Agatha, who appears in the sea. Spotting the massive kraken, Gordon prepares to attack, but Arthur reveals that the monster is his wife, leaving the hunter frightened. The Gilman man then convinces the fisherman to hunt down the evil mermaid. At sea, Nerissa insults Agatha, but the Kraken Queen appears to defend her daughter. Soon after, the monster charges at them both with a menacing trident. At the same time, Brill dives in search of his niece, whom he finds buried under dozens of rocks. He then realizes that Ruby is fine, but is sad that she has ruined everything her mother fought to achieve. Faced with this, her uncle convinces her to go her own way. In this way, the young woman frees herself from the pile of stones and admits that she will destroy the trident once and for all. Meanwhile, Nerissa unleashes powerful blows on her opponents, knocking them to the ground. However, the Gilman girl emerges from the sea and prevents the final attack. Quickly, the little girl sets off on a mermaid rampage, impressing all her friends on the prom boat. After that, Nerissa strikes Ruby with her trident, which she manages to block easily using her skin-thickening power. However, the mermaid uses its tail to knock the poor girl down. At the same time, the hunters come by boat to help, distracting the evil creature, so Agatha manages to throw debris at the monster. Ruby then lunges at her opponent, who throws her heart into the water, causing a giant wave that heads towards the prom boat and the fisherman. Quickly, the young Gilman holds the boat and prevents it from capsizing. After she is distracted, Nerissa appears again and strikes the girl with her trident, pressing her against the seabed. At the same time, the mermaid tries to destabilize Ruby, saying that she is a monster, this increases the strength of the girl, who fires a laser beam, throwing the powerful weapon away. As Nerissa searches for the magical object, the young kraken confesses to her mother that they must try to destroy it together, as their combined powers may be able to defeat it. Suddenly, the three are taken by surprise when the evil mermaid comes charging at them with her trident, but they manage to escape. Ruby then uses the laser beam to deflect the next blow, and then directs the power against the object. In response, the Kraken's women join the attack, destroying the magical artifact in an explosion. After the battle, everyone celebrates the victory of the giant monsters, and Gordon manages to capture the mermaid. Soon after, the Kraken family hugs and makes up, finally putting an end to the old disagreements that had separated them. At the dance, Ruby appears in a sparkling dress and all the teenagers thank her for saving the town. At the same time, the young woman apologizes for ignoring her friends while she was with Chelsea. Quickly, the Gilman girl finds Connor, and finally extends the invitation to him, who accepts using a mathematical calculation. Meanwhile, Gordon does a live broadcast apologizing for insulting the Krakens. At the same moment, the imprisoned mermaid is only concerned about her hair, which looks awful. The next day, Agatha shows the town to potential residents, highlighting her daughter as a positive for the community as she can protect everyone with her powers. At school, Sam uses his elasticity to be the best dodgeball player, dodging all the throws with ease. Then Ruby is summoned to attend an emergency, where an evil whale is heading towards the Kraken Kingdom. She says goodbye to Connor and jumps into the sea, ready to take on the challenge and protect her empire. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.